Sura 20. Taha. Context. Period of Revelation. The period of its revelation, is the same as that of Sura 19, Maryam. It is just possible, that it was sent down during the migration to Abyssinia or just after it. However, it is certain that this Sura was revealed before the companion, Umar, embraced Islam. According to a well-known and authentic hadith, when Umar, set out to kill the Prophet, he met a certain person who said, Before you do anything else, you should know that your own sister, and brother-in-law have embraced Islam. Hearing this he directly went to the house of his sister. There he found his sister Fatima, and his brother-in-law, said bin Zaid, learning the contents of a scroll from, Hubbab bin Arat. When Fatima saw him coming, she hid the scroll at once. But Umar had heard the recital, so he began to interrogate them. Then he began to attack his brother-in-law, and accidentally wounded his sister, who tried to protect her husband. They then gave in, with his sister exclaiming, We have become Muslims, you may do whatever you like. As Umar was moved to see blood running down from her head, he said, Show me what you are reading. The sister asked him to promise on oath that he would not tear it, and added, You cannot touch it unless you have a bath. Accordingly, Umar took a bath. When he began to read the scroll, which contained this surah, he spontaneously cried out, What an excellent thing! At this statement, Hubbab who had hidden himself, came out of his hiding and said, By God, I have great hopes that God will get much service from you, to propagate the message of his prophet. It was just yesterday that I heard the holy prophet praying to God. My Lord make one of the two Umars, Abu Hakam bin Hisham, Abu Jahl, or, Umar bin Hattab, a supporter of Islam. So, O oh, Umar, turn to God, turn to God. These words proved to be so persuasive, that he at once accompanied Hubbab, and went to the Prophet to embrace Islam. This happened a short time after the migration to Abyssinia. The Theme and Topics of Discussion This surah begins by defining the purpose of the revelation of the Quran. O Muhammad, we have not sent down to you the Quran that you be distressed, but only as a reminder for those who fear God. A revelation from He who created the earth and highest heavens. After this introduction, the Surah abruptly moves on to relate the story of Prophet Moses, without any apparent relevancy, and without even hinting at its applicability to the events of the period. However, if we read between the lines, we realize that the discourse is addressed, very relevantly, to the people of Mecca. But before we explain the hidden meaning of the discourse, we must keep in view, the fact that the Arabs, in general, acknowledged Moses as a prophet of God. This was because they had been influenced by the large number of the Jews around them, and by the neighboring Christian kingdoms. Now let us state those things which are hidden between the lines of the story. Number 1. God does not appoint a prophet by celebrating the occasion in a formal ceremony. To announce that such a person is being appointed as a prophet. On the contrary, he bestows prophethood in a confidential manner. Just as he did in the case of Prophet Moses. Therefore, you should not consider it strange if Muhammad has suddenly been appointed as a prophet without any public proclamation. Number 2. The Fundamental Principles Presented by Prophet Muhammad, Monotheism, Tawheed, and the Hereafter, are just the same as were taught to Prophet Moses. Number 3. Prophet Muhammad has been made the envoy of the message to the people of Quraysh, just as Prophet Moses was entrusted with the mission to go to Pharaoh. These are the mysterious ways of God. He catches hold of a wayfarer of Midian, on his way to Egypt, and says, Go and fight with the greatest tyrant of the time. He did not provide him with armies and provisions for this mission. The only thing he did was to appoint his brother as his assistant, at his request. Number 4. The people of Mecca, are reminded that Pharaoh employed the same devices against Prophet Moses, as they are employing against Prophet Muhammad, just, objections, accusations, and cruel persecutions. It should also be noted, 
that God's prophet was victorious over Pharaoh, who possessed large armies. Incidentally, the Muslims have been comforted that they should not be afraid of fighting against the Quraysh. Despite the fearful odds, for victory is from God. At the same time, the Muslims have been exhorted to follow the excellent example of the magicians of Egypt, who converted and remained steadfast in their faith, though Pharaoh threatened them with horrible vengeance. Number 5. An incident from the story of the Israelites has been cited, to show in what ridiculous manner the idolatry of false gods and goddesses starts, and that the prophets of God do not tolerate even the slightest tinge of this preposterous practice. Likewise, Prophet Muhammad is following the former prophets in opposing polytheism, shirk, and idol worship. Thus, the story of Moses has been used, to throw light on all those matters which were connected with the conflict between the Prophet and the Quraysh. Then at the end of the story, the Quraysh have been briefly admonished, stating that the Quran has been sent down in their Arabic language, for their own good. If they listen to it, and follow its admonition, they will be doing so for their own good, but if they reject it, they will be met with an evil end. After this, the story of Prophet Adam has been narrated, as if to tell the Quraysh that they are following the way of Satan, whereas the right way for a man, is to follow his father, Adam. Adam was beguiled by Satan, but when he realized his error, he plainly confessed it and repented and again turned back to the service of God, and won his favor. On the other hand, if a person follows Satan, and sticks to his error stubbornly in spite of admonition, he only harms himself. In the end, the Prophet and the Muslims, have been advised not to be impatient in regard to the punishment to the disbelievers, since God has his own plan concerning them. He does not seize them at once, but gives them sufficient respite. Therefore, you should not grow impatient but bear the persecutions with fortitude and go on conveying the message. In this connection, great emphasis has been laid on prayer, Salah, so that it may create in the believers, the virtues of patience, forbearance, contentment, resignation to the will of God and self-analysis, for these are greatly needed in the service of the message of truth. Surah 20. Taha. In the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Ta. Ha. We have not sent down to you the Quran, that you be distressed, but only as a reminder for those who fear God, a revelation from He, who created the earth and highest heavens, the most merciful, who is above the throne, established. To Him belongs what is in the heavens, and what is on the earth, and what is between them, and what is under the soil. And if you speak aloud, then indeed he knows the secret, and what is even more hidden. God, there is no deity except him. To him belong the best names. And has the story of Moses reached you? When he saw a fire and said to his family, Stay here. Indeed I have perceived a fire, perhaps I can bring you a torch, or find at the fire some guidance. And when he came to it, he was called, O oh Moses! Indeed I am your Lord so remove your sandals. Indeed you are in the sacred valley of, Tuwa. And I have chosen you, so listen to what is revealed to you. Indeed I am God. There is no deity except me, so worship me and establish prayer for my remembrance. Indeed the hour is coming, I am almost concealing it, for each soul to be rewarded for that which it strives. So do not let one avert you from it, who does not believe in it and follows his desire, for you then would perish. And what is that in your right hand O Moses? He said, It is my staff, I lean upon it and I bring down leaves for my sheep, and I have therein, other uses. God said, Throw it down O Moses. So he threw it down, and thereupon it was a snake moving swiftly. God said, Seize it and fear not, we will return it to its former condition and draw in your hand to your side, it will come out white, without disease, another sign, that we may show you some of our greater signs. Go to Pharaoh. Indeed he has transgressed, tyrannized, Moses said, My Lord, expand, relax, 
for me my breast, with assurance, and ease for me my task, and untie the knot from my tongue, that they may understand my speech. And appoint for me a minister, assistant, from my family, Aaron, my brother. Increase through him my strength, and let him share my task, that we may exalt you much, and remember you much. Indeed you are of us, ever seeing. God said, You have been granted your request O Moses. And we had already conferred favor upon you another time, when we inspired to your mother what we inspired, saying, Throw him into the chest, and then throw him into the river, and the river will lay him on to the shore, there will take him an enemy to me and an enemy to him. And I cast on you love for me, and plan that you should be reared under my watchful eye. And we favored you, when your sister went and said, Shall I direct you to, someone, who will be responsible for him? So we restored you to your mother, that she might be content and not grieve. And you killed someone, but we saved you from retaliation, and tried you with a severe trial. And you remained some years among the people of Madian. Then you came here at the decree time O Moses. I have specially prepared you for myself, go, you and your brother, with my signs, and do not slacken in my remembrance. Go, both of you, to Pharaoh. Indeed he has transgressed. And speak to him with gentle speech that perhaps he may be reminded or fear God. They said, Our Lord, indeed we are afraid that he will hasten punishment against us, or that he will transgress. God said, Fear not. Indeed I am with you both, I hear and I see. So go to him and say, Indeed we are messengers of your Lord. So send with us the children of Israel, and do not torment them. We have come to you with a sign from your Lord, and peace will be upon he, who follows the guidance. Indeed it has been revealed to us, that the punishment will be upon whoever denies and turns away. Pharaoh said, so who is the Lord of you two O Moses? He said, Our Lord is he, who gave each thing its form, and then guided it. Pharaoh said, Then what is the case of the former generations? Moses said, The knowledge thereof is with my Lord, in a record. My Lord neither errs, nor forgets. It is he, who has made for you the earth as a bed spread out, and inserted therein, for you roadways, and sent down from the sky, rain, and produced thereby categories of various plants. Eat there from and pasture your livestock. Indeed in that, are signs for those of intelligence. From it, the earth, we created you, and into it, we will return you, and from it, we will extract you another time. And we certainly showed him, Pharaoh, our signs, all of them, but he denied and refused. He said, Have you come to us? to drive us out of our land with your magic O Moses? Then we will surely bring you magic like it, so make between us and you an appointment, which we will not fail to keep, and neither will you. In a place assigned, Moses said, Your appointment is on the day of the festival, when the people assemble at mid-morning. So Pharaoh went away, put together his plan, and then came to Moses. Moses said to them, The magicians, summoned by Pharaoh, Woe to you, do not invent a lie against God, or he will exterminate you with a punishment, and he has failed who invents such falsehood. So they disputed over their affair among themselves, and concealed their private conversation. They said, Indeed these are two magicians, who want to drive you out of your land, with their magic, and do away with your most exemplary way, religion or tradition, so resolve upon your plan, and then come forward in line and he has succeeded today who overcomes. They said O Moses, either you throw or we will be the first to throw. He said, rather, you throw. And suddenly their ropes and staffs seemed to him from their magic, that they were moving like snakes. And he sensed within himself fear did Moses. We, God, said, fear not. Indeed it is you who are superior. And throw what is in your right hand, it will swallow up what they have crafted. What they have crafted is but the trick of a magician, and the magician will not succeed, wherever he is. So the magicians fell down in prostration, they said, We have believed in the Lord of Aaron and Moses. 
Pharaoh said, You believed him, Moses, before I gave you permission. Indeed he is your leader who has taught you magic. So I will surely cut off your hands and your feet on opposite sides. And I will crucify you on the trunks of palm trees. And you will surely know, which of us is more severe in giving punishment, and more enduring. They said, Never will we prefer you over what has come to us. Of clear proofs, and over he, who brought us into being, so decree whatever you are to decree. You can only decree for this worldly life. Indeed we have believed in our Lord, that he may forgive us our sins, and what you compelled us to do with magic. And God is better and more enduring, indeed whoever comes to his Lord as a criminal, indeed for him is hell, he will neither die therein, nor live. But whoever comes to him as a believer, having done righteous deeds, for those will be the highest degrees and position. Gardens of perpetual residence beneath which rivers flow, wherein they abide eternally. And that is the reward of one who purifies himself. And we had inspired to Moses, travel by night with my servants, and strike for them a dry path through the sea, you will not fear being overtaken by Pharaoh, nor be afraid of drowning. So Pharaoh pursued them with his soldiers, and there covered them from the sea, that which covered them, and Pharaoh led his people astray, and did not guide them. O children of Israel, we delivered you from your enemy, and we made an appointment with you, at the right side of the mount, and we sent down to you manna and quails, saying, Eat from the good things with which we have provided you, and do not transgress or oppress others therein, lest my anger should descend upon you. And he upon whom my anger descends, has certainly fallen, perished, but indeed I am the perpetual forgiver of whoever repents, and believes, and does righteousness, and then continues in guidance. God said, And what made you hasten from your people O Moses? He said, They are following in my tracks, and I hasten to you my Lord, that you be pleased. God said, But indeed we have tried your people after you departed, and the Samiri, has led them astray. So Moses returned to his people, angry and grieved. He said, O oh my people did your Lord not make you a good promise? Then was the time of its fulfillment too long for you? Or did you wish that wrath from your Lord descend upon you? So you broke your promise of obedience to me? They said, We did not break our promise to you by our will. But we were made to carry burdens from the ornaments of the people of Pharaoh. So we threw them into the fire, and thus did the Samiri throw. And he extracted for them the statue of a calf, which had a lowing sound, and they said, This is your God, and the God of Moses, but he forgot. Did they not see that it could not return to them any speech, response, and that it did not possess for them any harm or benefit? And Aaron had already told them before the return of Moses, O my people, you are only being tested by it. And indeed your Lord is the most merciful, so follow me and obey my order. They said, We will never cease being devoted to it, the calf, until Moses returns to us. Moses said, O Aaron, what prevented you when you saw them going astray from following me? Then have you disobeyed my order? Aaron said, O son of my mother do not seize me by my beard or by my head. Indeed I feared that you would say, you caused division among the children of Israel, and you did not observe or await my word. Moses said, And what is your case O Samiri? He said, I saw what they did not see, so I took a handful of dust from the track of the messenger, and threw it, and thus did my soul entice me. Moses said, Then go, and indeed it is decreed for you in this life to say, No contact. And indeed you have an appointment in the hereafter you will not fail to keep. And look at your God, to which you remain devoted. We will surely burn it and blow it, its ashes, into the sea with a blast. Your God is only God, except for whom there is no deity. He has encompassed all things in knowledge. Thus O Muhammad, we relate to you from the news of what has proceeded. And we have certainly given you from us a message. The Quran, whoever turns away from it, then indeed he will bear on the day of resurrection a burden, great sin, abiding eternally therein, 
and evil it is for them. On the day of resurrection, as a load, the day the horn will be blown. And we will gather the criminals, that day, blue-eyed. They will murmur among themselves, You remain not but ten days in the world. We are most knowing of what they say, when the best of them in manner, wisdom or speech, will say, You remain not but one day. And they ask you about the mountains, so say, My Lord will blow them away with a blast. And he will leave it, the earth, a level plain, you will not see therein, a depression or an elevation. That day, they, everyone, will follow the call of the caller, with no deviation therefrom, and all voices will be stilled before the most merciful, so you will not hear except a whisper of footsteps. That day, no intercession will benefit, except that of one to whom the most merciful has given permission, and has accepted his word. He, God, knows what is presently before them and what will be after them. But they do not encompass it, what he knows in knowledge. And all faces will be humbled before the ever-living, the sustainer of existence. And he will have failed who carries injustice, but he, who does of righteous deeds, while he is a believer, he will neither fear injustice, nor deprivation. And thus we have set it down as an Arabic Quran and have diversified therein, the warnings, that perhaps they will avoid sin, or it would cause them remembrance. So high above all is God, the Sovereign, the Truth. And O Muhammad, do not hasten with recitation of the Quran, before its revelation is completed to you, and say, My Lord, increase me in knowledge. And we had already taken a promise from Adam before, but he forgot and we found not in him determination. And mention when we said to the angels, Prostrate to Adam, and they prostrated, except Iblis, he refused. So we said, O oh Adam, indeed this is an enemy to you and to your wife. Then let him not remove you from paradise so you would suffer. Indeed it is promised for you not to be hungry therein, or be unclothed. And indeed you will not be thirsty therein, or be hot from the sun. Then Satan whispered to him, he said, O Adam, shall I direct you to the tree of eternity, and possession that will not deteriorate? And they, Adam and his wife, ate of it, and their private parts became apparent to them. And they began to fasten over themselves from the leaves of paradise. And Adam disobeyed his Lord and erred. Then his Lord chose him and turned to him in forgiveness, and guided him. God said, Descend from it paradise, all, your descendants being enemies to one another. And if there should come to you guidance from me, then whoever follows my guidance, will neither go astray in the world, nor suffer in the hereafter. And whoever turns away from my remembrance, indeed he will have a depressed, difficult, life. And we will gather, raise, him on the day of resurrection blind. He will say, My Lord, why have you raised me blind while I was once seeing? God will say, Thus did our signs come to you, and you forgot, disregarded, them, and thus will you this day be forgotten. And thus do we recompense he, who transgressed and did not believe in the signs of his Lord. And the punishment of the hereafter is more severe and more enduring. Then has it not become clear to them how many generations we destroyed before them? as they walk among their dwellings. Indeed and that are signs for those of intelligence. And if not for a word that proceeded from your Lord, it punishment, would have been an obligation due immediately, and if not for a specified term decreed. So be patient over what they say, and exalt God with praise of your Lord. Before the rising of the sun, and before its setting, and during periods of the night, exalt him, and at the ends of the day that you may be satisfied. And do not extend your eyes toward, that by which we have given enjoyment to some categories of them, its being but the splendor of worldly life by which we test them. And the provision of your Lord is better and more enduring. And enjoin prayer upon your family and people, and be steadfast therein. We ask you not for provision, we provide for you. And the best outcome is for those of righteousness. And they say, Why does he not bring us a sign from his Lord? 
has there not come to them evidence of what was in the former scriptures? And if we had destroyed them with a punishment before him, they would have said, Our Lord why did you not send to us a messenger? So we could have followed your verses, teachings, before we were humiliated and disgraced? Say, each of us is waiting, so wait. For you will know who are the companions of the sound path, and who is guided.